with sewing, some people are very talented and can make extraordinary things. And then others, well, we try our best. For today, I would like to show you how I made my first hoop skirt, and it's a very simplistic pattern, pretty much just a rectangle of fabric with channels. I used uh, single wide bias tape for the channels. You sew that on, create a waistband. I used a shoe uh, shoelace for a drawstring, and then you sew up the side. So fold the rectangular fabric, uh, and then sew one side seam, leave the channels open for the hoop to go into the hoop skirt, and voila, you have a hoop skirt. It may not be the most period historically accurate pattern, but it's a place to start if you are new to the SCA, if you are not confident in your sewing capabilities, or you just are pressed for time and need a hoop skirt quickly, then this pattern should work for you. My name is Lynn and welcome to my channel. Here are some examples of hoop skirts in the 16th century. First, I like to use muslin fabric. You can use what fabric you would like. You would need single wide bias tape and of course the wire for the hoop skirt. And this is the pattern that I used for this hoop skirt. Here's me demonstrating what the hoop skirt looks like after you have sewn the channels together, put everything together, sewed up the side seam, and for the drawstring, I just have a shoestring for the drawstring, and I also have it safety pinned together. That way you don't lose your drawstring inside the waistband. I've now tied it, and I've turned it around, so now I've got the seam facing the backside, and here is the completed project. This is what looks like underneath the skirt. And if you would like to sit down, make sure to lift up that top row of boning before you sit down. And then your skirts will fall down nicely along the side of your legs. For the hoop skirt, you want it to be roughly three feet wide for the diameter. This is the underneath side of the hoop skirt to show you what the channels look like when they've been sewn in. If, as you unfold the bias tape and pin it to your fabric, you will find that there are two folds and just sew along that fold and it will give you a nice even stitch. This is the side seam going down the hoop skirt. And that's what the side seam looks like on the front. This is what the waistband looks like. To make sure that the fabric doesn't unravel on you, it's good to fold it underneath and then sew. As you can see by my side seam there, I did not fold it over and so it's starting to fray. This is the, the first row of the boning. And you can see where I stopped the bias tape so that I could feed it into the channels. And on this one, I lost the little metal tip that goes on the end of the hoop, and so I ended up just using duct tape. And this is the third and then the fourth row of hoops. So again, duct tape, it's not period, not historically accurate, but it works in a pinch. So that's the underneath side, this is the front side, and this is my bottom hem. Depending on how tall or short you are, you might want to make this hem, if you're shorter, you want to make the hem shorter or fold up the fabric more. If you're taller, you can choose to make your fabric longer. This is me demonstrating how to tie it. And then once you tie a bow, it stays on nice and tight, and then when you're done, just pull the strings and the bow automatically comes out. Like I said, I have a safety pin holding it together so my drawstrings don't get lost in the waistband. And again, here is me demonstrating how to 
tie the hoop skirt on once you've made your hoop skirt. Thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video and would like to watch more of my videos, please follow the links on the side of the page. Please select thumbs up that you like the video. It helps with the algorithm. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. And please click subscribe and ring that bell to be updated when new videos come out.